Howdy y'all. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about Brexit. Uh, recently, uh, whether or not Britain should remain in the EU, recently President Obama went to the United Kingdom to wish the Queen a happy birthday and to advise citizens of uh, the United Kingdom to uh, remain in Europe, that remain in the EU, that it's in your interests to remain in the EU. Whether it is or is not in the interests of the uh, citizens of the United Kingdom is uh, for the citizens of the United Kingdom themselves to decide. Uh, I will tell you my view, but ultimately, if you're a, a citizen there, you have to make up your own mind. And I would just like to, to warn, give some guidance, give some caution, things that you might want to think about uh, before you cast your vote in, in the upcoming referendum. So, um, whenever you're being told that the terms and conditions of something are just oh so wonderful for you to accept, it's a perfectly valid inquiry to ask whether or not the person who's saying it's so wonderful for you would himself uh, accept the same terms and conditions. And uh, no American president could accept the terms and conditions uh, that are being uh, being urged upon uh, Britons. Uh, and indeed, we're, we're very uh, protective here of our sovereignty. We're, we, draw, we guard it uh, very jealously. Uh, even though in our Constitution, uh, treaties entered into by the United States are the supreme law of the land, the same as the Constitution, that comes with some restrictions, namely in that no treaty can be entered into, which parcels away uh, the sovereignty of the United States. It, it can't contradict explicit commands of the Constitution and whatnot, so there are, there are, other, there are restrictions on that power. Uh, but if the treaty is valid, then it, it does become the law of the land, the same as the Constitution. Um, now, if you think about the individual states in the United States, they could all be republics, and indeed some of them were republics before they joined the United States. But in order to join the United States, they had to forego some of their sovereignty. Domestically, we have dual sovereignty. Uh, the United States is sovereign in its sphere of operation, and the states are sovereign in their spheres of operation. And then there's some forfeiture on the part of the state, some, some uh, ceding to the United States sovereignty, uh, and that's how the, the United States operates on the world stage. So, for example, um, well, not for example, one of the touchstones of sovereignty is whether or not, as a plenary matter, you can decide who does and who doesn't come in to your borders in the first place. If you cannot make that decision all on your own, you're not fully sovereign. So, for example, California can't say to people from New York, you can't come into California. South Carolina, though they would wish to, cannot say to people of New Jersey, uh, damn Yankees, stay out. Uh, the damn Yankees have an absolute right to go uh, to South Carolina, and South Carolina can do nothing but accept it. And uh, so, in order, as I mentioned, in order to, to join the United States, they had to forfeit some of their sovereignty. So they're not, they're not nation states. They're not fully sovereign. They don't have ambassadors. They don't negotiate their own international affairs. That's done by the United States, as distinguished from the individual states. And as our civil war uh, should prove, Certain decisions, once made, cannot easily be unmade. You cannot un unring certain bells, one of which is a forfeiture of sovereignty. Once you have ceded part of your sovereignty, you don't get it back but by consent of the people to whom you've ceded it, or by war. Uh, our civil war showed that uh, when we're not consenting to give you back your sovereignty, um, you take your chances and the South didn't win, so... Mm -hmm. Anyway... Um, now, this is distinguished from a treaty where you'll agree to accept a certain number of refugees. We enter into agreements like this all the time. We'll take refugees from here, we'll take some refugees from there. That is not an encroachment upon our sovereignty because it is an unquestioned fact that at any moment we can do what uh, is the touchstone of sovereignty. We can take our left finger, stick it in our left ear, take our right finger, stick it in the right ear and go, la 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 la, you ain't coming in. Uh, sovereignty is about power. It, the raw exercise of power, whether it's exercised wisely or stupidly, doesn't bear on whether or not uh, you have the power, only how you're using it. And sovereignty is the possession of the power. Hopefully it will be used wisely, uh, but that is not a precondition, that's a hope. Um, so, we are exceedingly jealous uh, guardians of our sovereignty, and the, the very things being urged upon Britons to accept for their membership in the EU are things that uh, American citizens would not stand for. So, it may well be the case that it's in your interest to forfeit some of your sovereignty for uh, a promise, a hope of some safety, or various economic relationships, whatever it is that the individual voters in the United Kingdom are thinking about or important to them, uh, is for them to decide. So you need to figure that out on your own, but don't go into this blindly thinking that once you forfeit certain degrees of sovereignty, that you can just change your mind later on easily. Uh, these, these bells, once rung, 
are not easily unwrung, and I would advise you not to be eager um, to forfeit uh, the sovereignty of one of the great democracies of the world. Now, in some of the debates on the question about why would the President of the United States go there and advise this, uh, one of them was about um, how we came to the, the aid of the UK in the First World War and in the Second World War, and we've been guardians of the UK during the Cold War. Uh, all of that is true, but that those, it, it, the, for, the argument further went that uh, a million and a half Americans gave their lives or were uh, casualties of war in these various wars, uh, looking out for the interests of the UK, among other things. And that, that's one and a half million reasons the president would have. This is gibberish. Um, we will, as a staunch Republican, and I don't mean that as a political party, I mean it as a, a theory of government, Republicanism, uh, as distinguished from monarchism, for example, I'm a staunch Republican in that sense. Uh, I have a great deal of admiration for the UK. You've always stood up, stood up and done your own thing, and the more backbone the UK uh, shows, the more... Um, apt Americans are, we, you know, ordinary everyday Americans are to support the United Kingdom and then the more you look like sheep and are in, a, in, a, in, I don't know, some kind of hurry to be like the rest of the sheep in Europe, the less keen we are on you. We like strong allies, we like strong democracies, we like people who know who they are, what they stand for, why they stand for it, and are willing to, uh, you know, give the old two-finger salute to anybody who says otherwise. Politely, of course, but still the two-finger salute. An, an eloquently put, in, put insult is still an insult. There's no, there's no extremely polite way to call someone a piece of shit, though you can do it in more colorful language. And uh, for my own part, I like you more when you're stronger, and I like you better when you're independent. Uh, but as I mentioned, this is a decision for the, the voters in the United Kingdom uh, in their own discretion to decide for themselves. You must decide this for yourself, but do so with your eyes wide open. Now, um, I have a great deal of admiration for the royal family uh, for many reasons. Uh, I'll mention just a couple here. If you think about uh, um, you know, Her Majesty the Queen Mother, uh, Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, as she was styled, during World War II, when the government of the day advised her to send the children, I think, to Canada, the, uh, the kids to Canada because the city was being bombed, and her response was, the children won't go without me, I won't, I won't leave the king, and the king is never going to leave London, which is the kind of attitude that Americans, by and large, admire. We love people who stand up, even in the face of overwhelming odds, the face of death, and say, fuck you, we're going to stand our ground. We will not be bullied into surrendering. We will not be browbeaten into agreeing with you. We like strength. Um, the, the, the queen... Uh, who could have gone anywhere to, to save herself, and people would be like, okay, cool, we so got a continuity of government, uh, you know, this kind of thing. Instead, she's like, actually, send me some advisors to teach me how to shoot a gun in case they, uh, they come into the castle. I want to be able to, to fight it out till, till the end. We like that. And it is very sad for me to think about the UK slowly selling off, if you'll pardon the pun, the crown jewels, slowly parceling out its sovereignty and surrendering it to commissions, of bureaucrats in the EU. It is ultimately a decision for members, uh, uh, citizens in the United Kingdom to make, but it does sadden me to think that um, you guys would be that eager to slowly uh, perpetuate this decline of, of a great and proud democracy. Anyway, that's just my own view on, on that. I like the strength, I, I admire um, the stiff upper lip and the willingness to suffer the odds uh, for the sake of liberty. So, balance that how you want, do so intelligently, and think very carefully about uh, anyone who wants to invite you to do something with respect to your own sovereignty that they are willing to fight a war the drop of a hat over if anyone tried to uh, bring that to their shores. And I can assure you in this country, anyone who wants to come in and advise us to get rid of our sovereignty is going to be in for a fight. It is not something the American people would accept. It's not something any American president would accept. And indeed, we exempt ourselves in, in international treaties all the time from anything that even looks like it's going to encroach upon any sovereign decisions we might have to take. For example, we are not, uh, uh, we are not contracting parties to the additional protocol uh, to the Geneva Conventions. Uh, you hear about international law banning um, so-called carpet bombing or whatever. 
we are not members to that protocol. Uh, we're signatories to it saying we'll try to follow it, uh, we'll talk about it, but we didn't join it ultimately because joining that treaty, uh, that part of this new, this new additional protocol, would restrict in the future a president's options in war. And that is one thing that no American president can do, is restrict his own options. Our Constitution doesn't allow him to do it. Um, it doesn't allow him to parcel out our sovereignty. We're very protective of that here. Whether or not you should be that protective of it in your country is up to you, but I would advise you as one of your long-lost cousins to think very carefully about it and to not be like the remainder of the sheep in Europe. Be your own people. Uh, be proud of your, your heritage. Be proud of your traditions. Be proud of, be proud of your democracy. Be proud of your wonderful country and fight for it. And that's my advice from a long-lost cousin, divided by a common language and many thousands of miles, which makes us love you all the more. Have a great day.